What's up, guys? I know I kind of got a little bit of a face reveal going on, but if you follow my TikTok, you know it's not really a face reveal. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have the NFL 2023-24 record predictions. Before we get into the predictions, I want to do a little reaction to the last year's record predictions. I already know that they're not going to be great, but let's go straight into that right now. My prediction, 12 and 5. My prediction is 11 and 6. My prediction is 9 and 8. Dude, I'm a genius. My prediction, 7 and 10. This guy knows what he's talking about. 13 and 4. Hold on. Listen, I know the whole DeMar Hamlin situation was scary. Yes, they should have stopped the game like they did. The Bills were losing that game, and they ended 13 and 3. That, hey, that's a win in my book. That's a win in my book. I am so smart. Humbly. 8 and 9 is 7 and 10. 5 and 12. 12 and 5. 11 and 6. 11 and 6. 9 and 8. I guarantee you no team wants to see the Colts this season, whether it be in the regular season or the postseason. My prediction, 10 and 7. That is an awful guarantee by me. Wow. 10 and 7. 5 and 12. Jags are still the Jags though. And they'll be bottom feeding. My prediction, four and third. Eleven and six. Eleven and six. No more three win seasons. No more free wins okay. in the division. But they're still going six and eleven. Man. They're going okay. three and fourteen. Jalen Hurts and the offense are one of my dark horses to make some noise in the league this year. Fantastic take. My prediction, 11 and 6. Mm. Not a great prediction, though. 10 and 7. They can definitely be better than what I project them as, but for right now, I'm going to put them at 5 and 12. They were definitely better. 5 and 12. Stafford has had some injury concerns lately, which does scare me a little bit, but not enough to where I think they're going to drop the division. My prediction, 11 and 6. Correct to be scared. Lives up to his three first round picks hype. I just can't get behind him enough to where I think they'll win the division. My prediction, 10 and 7. 9 and 8. Then we wow. have the Seahawks. Geno Smith is the starting quarterback for this team. Not good. No hate to him, but that should tell you all you need to know about this team. My prediction, 5 and 12. Twelve and five. Ten and seven. Is six and eleven. Three and fourteen. Well. Let's just say that was uh not great. Now we are going to get into the actual predictions for this season, but before we do that, I have one more quick thing, and that is a thank you to Stadium Rant for presenting this video. Stadium Rant is a multimedia sports news brand made up of passionate sports fans just like ourselves creating sports content. Whether it's live streaming news coverage and sports debates on YouTube or sharing thoughts on teams through their articles, Stadium Rant has you covered in all facets of the game. Make sure to check out the description box below for more information. Now, back to the video. And here we go. Go. Starting with the Buffalo Bills, the offense will have no problem this year with Josh Allen basically having an unlimited supply of weapons at his disposal. They are still the best team in the division. The Bills are going 12 and 5. Next, we have the New York Packers, Jets. The Jets got their biggest need fulfilled in the addition of Aaron Rodgers, so he brought half the Packers roster with him. The Jets won't immediately be title contenders just because of Rodgers, but they will definitely win more games. They will finish second in the East with a 10-7 record. Next, we have the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins can be a very good team after their offseason additions, and if they stay healthy, the second one is a huge if, and being a part of one of the best divisions in the league, I think they're going to be good, but only with a 9-8 record. 
the New England Patriots. The Patriots made a great move in making Bill O'Brien the offensive coordinator, and their offseason was solid. The swap for Juju for Jacoby Myers seems like a lateral move to me, and they had a great draft, but someone has to be with the worst in this division. I have the Patriots going 7-10. and 10. Moving to the AFC North, we have the Cincinnati Bengals. Despite the possible Joe Mixon issues, the offense shouldn't really miss a beat this year, and their defense may regress this year after losing the safety duo in Bell and Bates, but they are still going to be one of the best teams in the AFC. It'll be no different this season. The Bengals are going 13-4. and four. The Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens finally have a decent receiving core, and Lamar got his money, so he is going to be there. He says he wants to throw for 6,000 yards, but I also want to be YouTube famous, and sometimes it's just not that easy. This is another team that often deals with injury problems, so while we're hoping those don't occur, the Ravens are going 10-7. and The Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers are building the picket fence and are slowly progressing through this rebuild? Mike Tomlin is a guaranteed 9 wins, and that's what I will give them this year. The Steelers are going 9-8. and The Cleveland Browns. The Browns can be a very good team if Deshaun Watson performs well, which is very possible. However, with what I saw last year does not give me much confidence in him doing so. They have a talented roster, but I can only feel comfortable giving them a 7-10 record. Moving to the south, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence will be one of the best quarterbacks in the league this year, and especially with the addition of Calvin Ridley to this offense, I expect them to bully this division this year en route to a 10-7 season. The Houston Texans. The Texans have something to be excited about under center since before Deshaun Watson became criminally horny. I love their coach and love their offseason. Their rebuild is headed in the right direction, and it starts with a 6-11 season. The Tennessee Titans. The Titans are kind of stuck in a purgatory right now between contending and rebuilding. They still have some great players and a great coach, but as a whole, they are unimpressive. I expect a step back this year and what could possibly be the last season of the Henry Tannehill era in Tennessee. My prediction, 6-11. The Indianapolis Colts. A team that was very disappointing for me last year will have a similar season this year but they will have way lower expectations. If the O-line struggles continue with their new polarizing rookie quarterback, I can see them having a 5-12 season. And to round out the AFC, we have the AFC West. Starting with the Kansas City Chiefs. These guys are good at football. The offense will remain amazing. Nothing is going to change as long as Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid are there. My prediction, 13-4. The Los Angeles Chargers. I don't know where I'm at with this team. They're full of studs, but I don't know if I trust the coaching. Maybe Kellen Moore will make a difference for the offense, but due to the roster talent, I can see them at 9-8. and eight. The Denver Broncos. Coaching can make a big difference, and I think that Sean Payton brings that to Denver, but I can't get behind a coach taking a 5-win team to a title contending team. My prediction is 9-8. and eight. The Las Vegas Raiders. The Vegas Patriots are confusing me. I don't like the way this rebuild thing is going. I don't really see them improving nor declining this year, so I give them a 7-10 record. Moving on to the NFC. Starting with the NFC East, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles got better again after they unofficially adopted Georgia as their developmental system, They killed the draft and will have the same core as last year, and they will be the best team in the NFC and in the league with a 14-3 record. Next, we have the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys have made some big trades this offseason with the addition of Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks. Call them washed if you want. These are solid pickups, especially at the small price that they paid. Any other division, you could see them have a shot at winning, but this year they will come up short, even with an impressive 11-6 11-6 record. The New York Giants. The Giants overachieved last season, but I am expecting more from them this time around. They've made some solid additions on an offense to help Danny Dimes progress even more and live up to the huge contract he just got. They had a good draft, so they should be amongst the top half of the NFC at 10-7. and The Washington Commanders. The Commanders are entering the year with Sam Howell, so how he performs is going to dictate their season. 
He has the weapons around him, but is the biggest question mark going into this year. I have them going 6-11. and 11. Moving north, we have the Detroit Lions. This is a weird time in my life where I am excited to watch Lions football. Dan Campbell has turned this team and culture around. Maybe not the gambling part, but the offense should still be clicking, and their defense, if it improves as much as they did on paper, then I can see them finishing 11-6. and six. The Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings winning 13 games last year was absurd, and I do not think that they will recreate it this season. They won't be bad by any means, but just not a 13-win team. I see a 10-7 record. Green Bay Packers. With the first season without an elite starting quarterback in a while, the Packers will be in a bit of an unfamiliar territory. This will be the first year of a very short rebuild, I think. Green Bay will go 6-11. The Chicago Bears. It kind of seems like I'm a Bears hater on this channel, the way I'm always sleeping on them, but I'm going to continue doing so. The Bears are another team that is in the middle of a rebuild and it's not quite done yet. Chicago made some great moves in free agency and I think they won the trade with the Panthers for the first overall pick. I think they will improve this year even if it's only by a couple wins. I think they will finish with a competitive 5-12. Going down south, we have the New Orleans Saints. The Saints went out and got their guy at quarterback and made some moves to address their offensive struggles. They still have a possible question mark with the Alvin Kamara suspension, but their biggest question mark really is the coaching staff. Can it pull their weight this year? I don't know. This is a prove-it year for that coaching staff. Lucky for them, they have a cakewalk of a schedule, and it leaves them no choice but to have a winning record at 9-8. and eight. The Atlanta Falcons. The Dirty Birds are starting to assemble a talented roster, but I think the whole year falls on Desmond Ritter, who I am honestly not very high on. They have good coaching and they have good players, but I cannot get behind him completely. I have them finishing at a solid 8-9. and nine. The Carolina Panthers. Despite their questionable coaching hire, they are headed in the right direction in becoming a respectable team. Their offense should be miles better this season, but I think there are steps to success, and that first step is a 6-11 and record. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It warms my heart to see the Buccaneers struggling again, but it isn't completely on the talent. If Todd Bowles struggled to muster up a solid offense with Tom Brady at the helm, who is to say that it will get any better this year with Baker Mayfield? Tampa Bay is in for a rough season at a 4-13 record. Finishing in the West, we have the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers have a weird quarterback situation on their hands, but it isn't something that they aren't familiar with. Losing D'Amico Ryans may hurt, but they still breed defensive coordinators in San Fran, so I am not worried too much. They will continue to be one of the best teams in the NFC and finish at 12-5. The Seattle Seahawks. I wrote Geno Smith off last year, and he indeed did not write back. Bobby Wagner is coming back for what I'm assuming is his last ride team-wise, with improvements on both sides of the ball, and we will see another solid year from Seattle. My prediction is 9-8. and eight. The Los Angeles Rams. The Rams were a roller coaster last year, and I expect another unfortunate season. Stafford being healthy will give or take a couple wins, but I think that this is far from their only concern. I see a 5-12 record. The Arizona Cardinals. What better way to end the video with the worst team in this upcoming season? They will be losing not in style because of those hideous uniforms, and they will not be having Kyler Murray for a significant amount of time this season. They kicked ass in the draft and got the face of their franchise, the players he wanted. However, this is just a small step in their rebuild. Arizona will be the worst team in the league this year at 3-14. and 14. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know what your NFL predictions are this year. Let me know which ones you do not agree with because I know I've definitely got a couple unpopular opinions. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share the videos with your friends. If you like this content, feel free to check out some more on my channel. And I will see you guys in the next video or TikTok. Oh, <laughs>